welcome back to Witch is the Moon. I'm your Friday hostess, Natalie. This week's topic is meditation. This is a very important topic to me. It has been a life changer for me. And in all actuality, I offer a one to one and a half hour class on meditation. Beginning meditation, how to meditate, finding your center grounding types of meditation, etc., etc. So, although I'm not going to cover my entire class in this video, I am going to use my notes from that class to make a few points here about meditation and how it can help you enhance your craft. Because since this channel is focused on witchcraft, I want to talk about how it has helped me in terms of my craft. Now, meditation has a lot of benefits, health benefits, and these are actually documented in medical journals, psychology journals, there are huge benefits to the practice of meditation. Meditation gains its history from the Eastern religions, but has spread over time to Sufism in Islam, to Kabbalism in Judaism. Uh, you see it in Gregorian chant and the use of the rosary in Catholicism and some of the, the mystical side of Catholicism. A lot of people don't realize that Catholicism has a mystic vein to it. Yes, it does. Sorry, I was trying to think of the right word. Couldn't think of the right word. But I want to talk about some of the ways that meditation can help you within the craft. Now, meditation, aside from having a lot of health benefits, is a very centering and grounding activity. And I find it very useful to meditate prior to engaging in any type of divination or scrying, as I talked about last week in the scrying video. And as I will cover again in the divination week, which is coming up in a couple weeks my list right here but I do want to talk about some of the different types of meditation and the reasons that people may meditate today in the practice of witchcraft we use meditation as a way to open the psychic channel and to clear ourselves of any kind of mental negativity prior to engaging in any spell work or activity now not everybody uses it that way specifically or exclusively but that is one of the major reasons you will see people meditate within the craft. When you meditate, you are opening up psychic channels, and a lot of people don't realize that. And some people do realize that. That's why it's not accepted very well. Like, for example, in Catholicism, the diehard militant Catholics will not engage in, in the practices of yoga, because yoga incorporates both meditation as well as uh, the different poses that you do in yoga are actually in honor to the various Hindu gods, and so they consider it a way of worshiping false gods. It's also, uh, I have also heard on some of the Catholic radio stations, meditation being down-talked because they say that you, if you're just opening your mind, then you're opening and you're allowing the evil one to come in and all of that, which is a crock of crap. But that's their beliefs, so I'm not going to disparage that right now, but they will talk about meditation in that way. Now, the problem with that is psychically, if you're strong enough, then nothing gets in when you're meditating anyway. Emptying your mind is not that you're actually emptying your mind and making yourself a tabula rasa. It's you are basically eliminating the psychic garbage that's in your head, and you're grounding yourself. You're clearing the stress from your mind, which is one of the reasons that people meditate today. It's often used as a way to de-stress and to declutter the mind, and as witches, that is one of the ways in which we use it. I also use it as a Reiki practitioner prior to conducting any type of energy work or energy healing, which a lot of us witches also practice Reiki. Reiki is not specifically a witchcraft practice, although if you're Catholic it is, because I've also heard them down talk Reiki. I had no idea what Reiki was until I heard Tommy... Tamio, her name is Teresa Tamio. She was down talking. No, it wasn't Teresa Tamio. I apologize. It was Bennett Yankovic or whatever her name is. Uh, she is a big time Catholic person. She has Catholic radio uh, show in the afternoons, and she was talking about how Reiki is evil and you should not use Reiki and Reiki is bad. And I had never heard of Reiki, so she made me look into Reiki. So thanks, Jeanette Bankovic. That's her name, Jeanette Bankovic. Because now I am a third degree, um, third level Reiki, third degree. I'm a Reiki master. I've reached the third level of Reiki and, and have been attuned as a Reiki master and can do Reiki healings in person and at distance. So 
I will meditate before any type of energy work that I do because I want to clear my energy, clear my space, clean my chakras, and clear myself so that what I am doing is pure for the benefit of the person that I'm working with. So how can that be evil? I don't know. But anyway, there are various different styles of meditation. You have basic meditation, focused meditation, activity-centered meditation, which I often engage in, mindfulness meditations, guided visualizations, and spiritual meditations. And so I don't want to go into each one of those specifically or clearly because then what would be the point of taking my class, right? But I will talk a little bit about some of the styles of meditation because I actually engage in all of these types of meditation, but not so much when I'm practicing the craft. I do it as a grounding technique, which does enhance my craft, I think, and makes my craft more. The ones that I'm going to focus on right now are guided visualization, spiritual, and focused meditations, because those are the meditations, styles that I use specifically within the practice of the craft before I do spell work or while I'm doing spell work, something like that. Now, basic meditation would be just a simple kind of clearing your mind using some sort of a chant something like that to kind of ground and center yourself so it could be something as simple as just closing your eyes and taking a deep breath of air and focusing on your breathing that's a basic meditation a focused meditation in my mind is when you are using something to focus your mind so if you'll remember last week in the scrying video I had my amethyst crystal and I said that I use that as a focal point for meditation that is a focused meditation I am looking at that and I am using that as a point to focus and channel my energy and to clear my mind and ground myself now the reason I like the amethyst for that is because amethyst is a stone that's very well known for communication and for clearing so I, I use it it's it's wonderful it has a beautiful energy for that I will sometimes hold it in my hand and use that as a focal point another thing that I use in my focus meditations which I didn't think to get down are the Dharma cards that I received and I've talked about these I've shown them in previous videos I think here on the channel but also uh, on my personal channel Dharma cards are cards that you can buy that have teachings of Buddha on them now, on one side is a picture on the other side is a teaching and so I will repeat that to myself and that is a focused meditation. It's also borders on spiritual meditation. There's there's a very thin, fine line between spiritual meditation and focused meditations because oftentimes focused meditations incorporate spiritual things, if that makes sense. So to me there's there's a very thin thin line between those two. Spiritual meditations are ones that focus specifically on your connection to deity or spirit in some way. So the use of prayer beads specifically where you are invoking a specific deity, that would be more of a spiritual meditation. So for you Catholics out there, your rosary, guess what? That's a spiritual focused meditation. Just saying. Uh, they have other ones too. The rosary is not the only one. There was a... a a prayer that I used to do at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every day. It came on the radio, and basically they're singing it, and I loved it, and I still love it to this day. There's still something about that meditation that resonates with me, and so I will still sometimes engage in that, but it's not a, a witchy thing at all. It's just I enjoy the meditation, and I enjoy the words. It's, it's got a good message, and it's clear, but I, for the life of me, cannot think of what the name of that meditation is. Now, an activity based meditation what is that it's similar to a focused meditation except that you're physically doing something so you can be meditating while you are gardening you can be meditating while you're baking you can be meditating while you are sewing I often do sewing as a an activity based meditation because especially if I'm doing it for a purpose so for example I made some robes for if you have been a watcher of this channel for some time, many of you recognize or will remember Amethyst Moon. She was the one who owned this channel prior to handing it over to me. And she had a baby, which is why she left the channel. She just became too busy that she couldn't do the videos regularly. And I really miss Erin a lot. But I made both of her daughter's robes. And 
I don't have a machine, so I sew by hand. So with each stitch, I was focused on and I was enchanting each stitch. So for me, it was a bit of a spiritual, but also a focused meditative activity. So I'm focused on what I'm doing, but I'm allowing my mind to just do whatever it does. And sometimes I'll actually get messages while doing this from spirit, which is kind of crazy, but well, not really. I mean, you're opening your mind so spirit gets into you. I'm not focused on what happened during the day. I don't think about any of those things. I'm focused on the activity, but it allows my higher level brain to function because now my lower level brain is engaged in this activity and that will automatically open up psychic channels for you. So that is one really very good meditation. A lot of people find gardening is, is very good and it, you know, as you're doing the same kind of repetitive activity, you know, you're digging the hole, putting the seed, covering it up, digging the hole, putting the seed, covering it up, or you're just kind of tilling in the ground and pulling the weeds, tilling the ground, pulling weeds. That is an activity that lends itself to meditative techniques very well. You, you kind of find yourself focused on the activity and you're kind of in a way centering and grounding yourself. So it is another activity. A lot of people find running or some sort of physical activity working out. Often I find people use that in a meditative way and don't even realize they're doing it. So any activity like that, I think sometimes reading becomes a meditative activity, especially for me because I tune everything out. But it's not that I read specifically to meditate. It's that it can be used as a meditative activity. Now, guided visualizations are something that I use. And for the beginning meditator, I find that guided meditations are very, very good. Because one of the questions I often get as an instructor is, how in the hell can I clear my mind? You know, how do I shut my mind up? Because a lot of people labor under the idea that when you are meditating, you must be Absolutely quiet. Your mind must be blank. That is not necessarily true. You are simply needing to clear your mind of the daily activities and worries that are going on in your life and allow yourself a vacation from your life, so to speak. So for me, meditation's key because I'm so busy with my business, my private practice, my other business, the Purple Broom Apothecary, you know, doing things like making flying ointments, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, that I use for meditation, so that sort of thing, that I don't have a lot of time to just take a vacation, and I don't have a lot of money to take a vacation, so I frequently take vacations to the beach in my mind, in meditation form, and it is not as helpful as actually sticking my feet in the sand and feeling the salt water and smelling the salt air, but when your visual visualization skills become strong enough, you can actually smell the salt air. It's, it's incredible, especially if you use something in your hand like a seashell or something that connects you, uh, a little bottle of sand from somewhere and you hold on to that, it, you can actually focus your, your mind enough that you can set off your olfactory system. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. That freaking ice cream truck has gone by my house. Four times now because somebody is trying to tempt me out the door and I'm not going to do it. So in any case, bastards. So I'm trying to lose weight. I've put on a, he's going back and forth in front of my house. I can hear it because now he's over here and then he's over here. Oh, man, it's an asshole. But I, I, I put on a lot of weight when I was in my early 30s and although I haven't put on any more weight since then and I'm not going to tell you how old I'm going to be next month, but uh, Suffice it to say, the, the weight has never left. I haven't put any more on, but I've never been able to get rid of what I had. And so I'm really trying to make some serious lifestyle changes to get myself to a healthy point and to get myself back to where I'm happy with me. And meditation is actually helping me with that, by the way, because now that the ice cream truck's gone by and my mind's going to be focused on ice cream, I'm going to do a meditation when this video is over so that I can clear my mind of that right now. So in any case, guided visualizations are excellent for the beginner. And so what I want to get into now is a little bit about some of those questions that you get as a teacher. The biggest one is how do I clear my mind? Well, you don't necessarily have to make your, your mind a tabula rasa, folks. You don't have to be a blank slate. You just need to have your mind focused on something other than what's going on around you and what's what's going on in your life. You need to release that tension. So when I first started meditating, uh, when I first started to record this video, I was I was kind of going on the fly. I didn't have my notes for my, my lecture, so my class. One of the things that I mentioned that I have not mentioned yet again is that when I first started meditating, it was actually before I openly started practicing craft. Uh, I was still trying to be a practicing Catholic. And I went to a face-to-face -face confession 
with a very old hellfire brimstone, old-fashioned, old, you know, pre-Vatican II priest. And one of the things he said to me is, you are very angry. <laughs> You're very angry. Everything you do is motivated by anger. I feel like I've heard the, the confessions of everybody in your life except for you at this point. And I went, and it was like a little, it really was. And it opened up my eyes to a lot of things. And I realized that I was indeed a very angry person, partially because I'm empathic and I absorb the energy of the people around me. And my husband is an incredibly angry person, bless his heart. And I don't think he means to be. I don't even think he realizes that he is, but he's angry constantly. That energy just radiates off of him. And I think that that's part of the reason why he's not able to get into the field that he wants to get into because you're dealing with people and people don't want to be around somebody like that. And I think that he doesn't even realize. He thinks he's being positive and it still comes off in a very negative, forward way. And I don't think he, he realizes that at all. He just hasn't opened his eyes to the fact that he's an angry person. And I had to open my eyes to the fact that so was I <laughs> and you know that's that was only part of the cause I mean I, I felt that I had a lot of legitimate reasons to be angry but the fact is all those reasons were in the past and I needed to let it go and meditation was one of the methods by which I did that it really helped me a great deal I had a lot of gastrointestinal problems meditation has been shown to help with gastrointestinal problems by the way because guess where I hold my stress here and here it's in the stomach and it's in my head and in my jaw, you know, my tension's always here and here. My stomach just knots up and it's horrible. So once I learned about the chakra system and I learned how to clear my chakras, my throat, which is related to the jaw, by the way, and, you know, clearing my third eye and clearing out my stomach, I, I learned how to let go of that. And it was through guided visualizations that I started. So for those of you that feel like you need to have your mind clear, not necessarily true. I would like to guide you to a couple of sources for meditation that can really help you a great deal, especially if meditation is something that is difficult for you or that you are new to or even if you just want a new spin on it. There are uh, 50 million different recorded meditations on YouTube. I am going to recommend very, very highly The Honest Guys. If you are not tuned into that channel, please go and check them out now. They have got a million different guided visualizations and meditations. They have meditations for everything under the planet. And if you are a Lord of the Rings fan, like this chicky, they have some guided visualizations like the party in the Shire. And it sounds kind of silly goofy, but I'm going to tell you, their meditations ha, have helped me so much. They have meditations for letting go of the past, meditations for... Uh, focusing on your inner child and forgiving your inner child for reconnecting. They have meditations for make, creating an inner sanctum in your mind. They have one called The Cottage in the Snow. I listen to that one before I go to bed at night using a little of my flying ointment. And I'll tell you what, I have slept better in the last six months. I was having the worst time falling asleep. Somebody was sending me some bad juju and it was really affecting me. And I was not sleeping. I kept waking up at exactly 4.44 every day or between the hours of 3 and 4 o'clock every day. It started out waking up between 3 and 4 every day. And then it started at 4.30 and then it went to 4.44 and it was 4.44 on the dot. I'm telling you for like a month or two solid every day. And I'm one of those people that when my sleep gets interrupted, you might as well just start it over. Because I need my, my six to eight hours of uninterrupted beauty sleep. <laughs> yes, folks, this beauty doesn't come from just naturalism. It's, it takes work. But seriously, I, I need my rest. I get huge bags, bigger than I've got now, under my eyes when I don't get enough sleep. And when it's interrupted, it's just it's horrible. So their meditations have actually helped me fall asleep. I just put my little headphones on. And I turn off the notifications on my phone, and I might utilize a little flying ointment, and I will lay down in my bed, and I will just listen to that meditation, and I will zone out. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the use. Are you okay, Bo? 
we have a new dog. He's got that cone of shame on, and he hasn't been eating. I'm a little worried about him. He hasn't been eating in the past couple of days, although my, my youngest came home and gave him some fruit. He ate that like he was going out to stop at the dog food. He's been puking, and he's not been eating it. He's been taking his meds, but um, I'm not sure what's going on with him. But he just slid, and I'm not sure if he just slid on the mat that my chair is under my desk or if there's something wrong with him. He's got the cone of shame because some other dogs had attacked him before he went to the shelter and they tore up his head and his ears. They nearly chewed his ears off. So they stitched him up for us and he's got to go back on Saturday to get his stitches out. So I'm going to have them take a check at him and make sure everything is okay. But anyway, flying ointments. This is a one ounce jar of my flying ointment that I create for my shop, the Purple Bloom Apothecary. Shameless vlog. Now, the flying ointments... Uh, a lot of people use them. Everybody has their own recipe. I've got my own recipe that I use. Um, I sell this for $25 for an ounce, and an ounce will last you quite a while because it does not take a lot. I don't want to um, tell what's in it specifically because it's a proprietary recipe. However, I will tell you that some of the contents of this are toxic if ingested, so you should never, ever, ever under any circumstances ingest the stuff, and you shouldn't use it if you're allergic to it. If you start to break out in a rash, discontinue its use. If you have a bad, weird, kind of psychedelic type trip, which hopefully you won't because mm -hmm. nothing in here is illegal. This is all legal substances. But if you have a bad reaction to something sent, please discontinue its use immediately and seek a professional. I do include a list of ingredients for people who, who order it. So, you know, what's in there can be taken to the doctor and I have all my, my warnings and stuff, but basically I'll use some of this and I, I usually just put it on my wrists, behind my ears, on my temples, behind my knees, and um, that's it. That's where I put it. Some people like to put it all over, whatever suits you, but it, it seems to work just fine for me. And it allows me to relax enough to get into a transcendental state, which that's another form of meditation, transcendental meditation. And that's the one that we seek to achieve when working in spellcraft. And basically, transcendental means that you have reached a shift of consciousness. You are in another plane, friends. And so that, that comes with a much deeper type of meditation that I don't go into. And I won't go into this video. But, ding, if you can reach that point. You hit it, folks. It's almost as good as finding the G spot. So, those guided visualizations can help you clear your mind in a way. It's not, again, needing to be a blank slate. Ohm meditations. I want to talk about this really briefly because I just realized this video is like already almost a half an hour long, and I don't want to just blather on about it. Ohm meditations. The ohm is important because ohm is carried on a frequency that specifically connects to a, a part of the brain that has been known to carry universal human experience type things, basic instinctual kinds of things. The ohm meditation, when done properly, will directly connect you into the source that connects all of us within the universe. And it has been very, very helpful to me in sending meditative messages because I use meditation as a way to send psychic messages to people. I will repeat the message that I want to say so it's almost like a mantra. We talked about that a few weeks ago. If I have a specific message, like I want someone to contact me, I will, I will visualize that person while I have an ohm chant going in the background so that I am utilizing the ohm. It's coming into me in the vibratory method, and I am saying, call me, call me. And I will visualize that person's face when I want that person to call me or message me or somehow get in touch with me. Or if there's something else that I want to send to that person, message-wise, I will do so. So I will I will utilize that, and I have found that to be extremely effective and very useful. But it's also good just for connecting in a universal way. So meditation allows us to tap into the psychic and universal spiritual sources that allow us to connect with one another in other ways, but it takes a higher level of meditation. So don't be frustrated if you can't get to it right away. Start with some of the guided visualizations. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is also if you have a hard time finding time, you can use an app called the Insight Timer, and Timothy Roderick turned me on to this app. It is absolutely fantastic. I use their 
uh, guided their, I use some of their guided meditations because they have guided meditations on there too. They have things that use singing bowls. So there's music accompanying some of these meditations. And I find that that helps me a great deal also. They also have a timer on there so that if you want to start doing a timer and it will tell you you've had so many days, consecutive days of doing a timer, you can connect with other people to create meditative triangles. You could have a meditation buddy that will help keep you accountable for meditating on a day-to-day -day basis but that app definitely tracks your meditation if you use it daily it's going to tell you and you start getting little stars and dings and all sorts of neat stuff and it just helps you to track how often you're meditating now they have a timer on there and on that timer you can have different background sounds and ohm is one of the background sounds that you can use for free on that that app it's free but you can upgrade to a premium and get access to other things and it has like either you can have a wooden block that goes ding and you could have a countdown to the timer so you can do some breathing to get into it before you do it and you'll hear the ding I use a basu bell and it goes ding and then it goes in and I have a 30 second timer in fact I have my phone here let me see if I can open that up for you um, blah, 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 blah. this is the 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 insight timer app it looks like a little bowl and you just tap on that okay the app is free I believe it's available on Android as well they have a new home page, and I'm afraid that you're not going to be able to see it very clearly. Uh, it keeps wanting me to rate the app. I keep telling it, remind me later. But you can connect with other people and have friends who will help you. But if you'll look down here on the bottom, you see this little little thing right here? This is for the headphones for, for pre-recorded meditations. This one here is the timer. And then I have my timer preset. You can have preset timers. Mine is set for a 15 minute meditation and I have a 30 second warm up window. So once it goes off in the 30 seconds, you're going to hear the basu bell and it dings at the beginning and at the end of my meditation. So I'm going to let it count down because I want you to hear what it sounds like. Count down with me kids. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Okay, it's very soft. I have the volume down a line. There starts my own meditation. Now, as you can see, it counts down. When it gets to the end, it dings the bell again, and then you will see something like... Okay, my phone just dipped out on me. Take a minute. Okay, I can pause this meditation, and it's going to ask me, finish early. If I tell it, yes, finish early, you can see that down here it says done, and it says don't log. I'm going to click the don't log because I wasn't actually meditating. Otherwise, you can meditate for two minutes, five minutes. It will log your meditation and it will tell you, yeah, you meditated. And it's going to say, thank you, congratulations. So my volume is only at 38%. But it is a wonderful, wonderful app. And it allows you to connect with other people. And it can increase your accountability for, for meditation. You don't have to connect with anybody on it. But there are other meditations that you can use. So between the Insight Timer and the Honest Guys, I think that those are two of the best resources for meditation in terms of what I have found, especially for a beginner. So utilize it to the best of your ability and don't be frustrated if you don't have some great spiritual experience from it right at the first. It's going to take time. Start out with some guided visualizations and slowly move into the music and then slowly you can move into just learning to meditate on your own and I, I think that's probably one of the best ways you can go. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been useful to you. I hope it will be more useful to you in the future in your craft and blessed be.